Amen. Welcome to Salty. We're so thankful that you're here, everyone in the house, everyone watching online. Let's worship him today. forward to that day to when you will be able to see Christ just say amen. amen praise the Lord it is good to see you at solitude you can be seated for just a moment hey we're going to worship some more in just a moment I read this this morning it just blesses my heart it's in John chapter 8 verse 12 then Jesus again spoke to them saying I am the light of the world he who follows me will not walk in darkness, will be have, but will have the light of life. I love that verse because Jesus says to them, I am the light of the world. Follow me. You're not going to walk in the darkness. You're going to have some light. I tell you what, we need some light in this world today, okay? And here's where it is. That light is in us. That light is in us. Every one of us has been born again and been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. As we walk life, we shed light. 
wherever we go. I hope you're able to know that light today and hope you're able to know the Lord Jesus today. So welcome. I know there's several people here for the very first time or maybe the first time in a long time and they're come to celebrate with us today. We have something in just a moment that's awesome. We're going to celebrate together with a baby dedication and then in just a little bit uh, you're going to meet some uh, some new folks, Operation Christmas Child folks and they're here and it's going to be awesome to be able to meet them and to hear what they have to say. Hey, Solitude's done Operation Christmas Child for about 25 years now. And so I think we started in 98. So it's been an awesome journey. We're going to learn more today. And uh, we have some awesome days ahead of us with this ministry. So you're going to get to meet Edward here in just a few moments. And he is an awesome young man. And uh, he is funny. And he's full of pranks. And he joked me when he walked in the building this morning. He's like, uh, I said, man, I watched your video. I watched that video of you a hundred times this week. It, just, it compels me. And he says, oh, that wasn't me. I said, it wouldn't. I said, it looks just like you. And he said, it's my twin brother. And I just went, huh? He said, gotcha. <laughs> like, blah, blah. He's funny. He's funny. And he don't mean to be, okay? He don't even mean to be. He's just funny. You will be blessed, okay? You're going to be blessed by, by today. So, just a um, couple things to note. Uh, Awana Youth Wednesday Nights Bible Study. Sarah Nelson's doing the Bible study on Wednesday nights on the book of Revelation. So there's a place for you to be on Wednesday nights. We had an awesome Wednesday night last week. Uh, lots of people here. The word of God's going into the hearts and lives of people. We're excited about that, okay? So know about that. Plug into that. And hey, next weekend is September. Y'all, can y'all believe that? September. In September, uh, the third Sunday of September, we're going to have a family day and we have the retreat center rented again. So we'll all be able to go in the afternoon. It's going to be a great day. So just plan on September 17th. Lock it in. Be at church. Be available that afternoon. We'll go down and have a great time together. Okay. So are you ready? Miss Lisa is going to get Everybody headed to children's church. That is preschool through second grade this morning. And they are moving into masses. I see them coming now. That's awesome. Amen. Hey, at this time, Colt and Chelsea Chastain is going to bring Charlie. And she's going to come right here. And they're going to do a dedication this morning. I'm going to swap out and get this right here. Okay. They're going to come and stand on the stage with us. And I know they have family with them today. They are excited. I think Charlie Grace was born, I believe, on June the 7th. On June the 7th. And so uh, they are excited to, to bring her today and to dedicate her to the Lord. So uh, we love this family and thank the Lord for them. So uh, here's what I'm going to ask you guys a question, okay? And so you're here, you're part of Solitude Baptist Church, and, and you have, have Charlie Grace. And so did you come today? Do you come and you, do you dedicate her to raise her up in the knowledge and admonition of the Lord, to teach her to love the Lord, and to raise her up in the church and honoring God? Is that something you do? All right, and here's what we do as a church. So we, we as a church support them and come along beside them and get behind them in this moment as they come and, and dedicate her to raise her up and to help them to grow and to love and, and to raise her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Do we agree to that? And everybody says, amen. amen. Awesome. Here's what we have. This is baby dedication to certify that, that Charlie Grace Chastain was dedicated to the Lord on the 27th day of August the year of 2023 at Solitude Baptist Church by her mom, Chelsea, and her father, Colt. Held that. That is awesome. And in here we have a Bible. I don't know if she has a Bible yet, but here's her Bible, her dedication Bible. And we have written in front of it about her dedication day. And when I can, and when it, the Lord leads me to this, uh, I have a verse. And today is the verse that I read earlier. And I think everybody should have a life verse. And so this can be hers for now. And you can teach this to her. And it's just it's simply those words in, in John eight twelve when Jesus spoke and said, I am the light of the world. For he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
And so she can know the light of life if you teach her, if you teach her about Jesus. Okay? So I want you to have that as, as a keep. And then you can share that with her as she gets a little older. And we love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing her and dedicating her today. And for all your family that is, is here with y'all today, I'm just going to pray, okay? We're going to pray and, and dedicate her to the Lord right now. Father in heaven, I thank you, uh, Lord, for Colt and Chelsea as they come today and bring Charlie Grace. Lord, they bring her into church this morning and they come before you and before all of us. And Lord, in their heart today, they pledge and they dedicate to you this young life to bring her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, to know Jesus, to love him. And Lord, I pray to be able to know him and the salvation. And Lord, may her life bring honor and glory to you in all that she does. So bless them as they, they dedicate her today. Bless their family who comes along beside them and our Solitude Baptist Church family as we come together with them and give great thanks to you for her life and for her dedication today. Bless her parents. We love them and we thank you for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Love you, man. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Bless you. Mm -hmm. All righty. Hey, just celebrate that. That's awesome. Absolutely. Just on a personal note, that's particularly pleasurable to me since I've known Colt since he was just a little boy. And to see him grown up and, and have a, a child is awesome. And to have them at church this morning. So, hey, if you'll stand, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to worship some more. Then we're going to hear from Operation Christmas Child. And uh, I know you open your heart. God's going to bless you today. God's going to bless you in an unusual, unusual way. Okay? Father, you are good. And we thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for, for Charlie Grace, who is just brought before you and dedicated to you. I pray for Cold and Chelsea. God, in the days ahead, strengthen them and their faith and strengthen them, to Lord, to be godly parents. Thank you for them and all who join with them today. For everyone who is at Solitude Baptist Church today, we've met for the purpose to honor and to glorify you, to lift up the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, to lift up uh, Jehovah Almighty God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, for Edward and Jamie being here. Bless them as they come in a few moments and share with us. And Lord, I pray that our hearts will be set on fire anew and afresh today for you. And Lord, for this ministry called Operation Christmas Child that sends these shoeboxes all over the world that touches hearts and changes lives and brings salvation through your word into the hearts and lives of children all across the planet. So Lord, be in this place today. Fill us with your spirit. God, fill us now to be able to lift up and to worship you. And we thank you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin this next song, I want you to sing the chorus of it first as your prayer to Jesus. It simply says, thank you, Jesus. Sing it right here. Thank you, Jesus. Let this be your prayer.
Father, we are not worthy, but because of your Son, you made us worthy. Lord, there's nothing that we can do other than to give you our very heart, our very soul, our very life. And God, we take these broken pieces and you put the pottery back together because you are Lord, you are Savior. Father, we love you so much. We're so thankful. We're so gracious. We're so we're filled with so much gratitude for what you've done. Lord, we could never repay you, but we can live a life holy and pleasing unto you. So, Father, now as we continue in this service, as Edward comes to speak of the incredible, incredible blessing that Operation Christmas Child is, God, I pray that you would place in our hearts a desire to serve, to worship, to love, and to share the gospel by all means necessary. Father, we love you and we thank you. So in Jesus' holy name I pray. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Good morning, Solitude Baptist. Uh, good morning. It's a blessing to be here with you, and uh, I know you're excited to hear from our speaker this morning, but it's always a pleasure for me to get to personally come, not only introduce Edward, but to do a thank you to our local churches for what you do for Operation Christmas Child. My name is Jamie McGlawn, and I am the area coordinator here in Northeast Alabama. And what that role is, is just somebody who's excited about sharing the love of Jesus with other people and encouraging them to get involved in this ministry. So we have about five counties in Northeast Alabama who serve locally. If you didn't know that, you have a local team that's here to support you and encourage you with what you're doing with Operation Christmas Child. You are blessed to have one of our uh, year-round volunteers, Miss Tanya Weekly. She is our church relations team member, and we have year-round volunteers that serve in capacities from prayer team members to church relations like Tanya to logistics as hosting as their church as a drop-off location. So if you love this ministry and you want to serve at a deeper level, please let me know before you leave today because we need more volunteers to see this ministry carry forward. So with that, I wanted to give a personal thank you to what you as a church have done. We heard uh, Pastor Joey share that y'all have been packing for 25 years. And I went back and looked. Last year, you packed right at 300 boxes. So if you took 300 boxes, and this is rough math, because I know some years you do more, some years you do less, but for 25 years, that's 7,500 children, at least, who have heard the gospel thanks to what you do here at this church. And that definitely deserves an amen and a hallelujah, as we've already uh, sung about this morning. And you know what? God promises us heaven here and in the hereafter. We get to see a glimpse of, of your work here with the guest speaker today with Edward, because you don't always get to hear the personal testimony of what the shoe boxes can do in the life of a child. In eternity, I believe we'll get to see the children who came to know Jesus because of the work you did in packing that shoe box because it's not just about the gifts. Every child that gets that box hears the gospel and many families beyond that child have come to a saving grace in Christ Jesus. And I do believe we'll get to meet them one day. But today you get to meet Edward Nadecki and you get to hear his personal testimony of what these shoebox gifts have done in his life. So I'm going to turn it over to him. Oh, you got one. Okay. They put me to be fancy. Okay. Uh, Wow, what a honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you this. If you don't know how amazing to be in the house of the Lord, to sacrifice everything, to leave everything behind you this morning, and to be here and to worship, I want you to visit the countries that is a, not possible for them 
to gather like this and to worship. Then you're going to know that it's an honor to be in the house of the Lord. And if you hear me talking, maybe you can hear the southern accent. I don't know. <laughs> if you don't hear the southern accent, I can add it more. The y'all thing. Um, I learned that I have to do that. But let me tell you why I'm here. Now I'm going to tell you also, if you are here to hear me talking about Operation Christmas Shower or to hear my testimony about the shoebox, I think you are not going to hear that today. Because I'm not here for that. I'm not here to tell you about the shoebox. I'm here to tell you the message in the shoebox. I'm telling you today the message why we are here, why we say Jesus Christ is the Lord. But for me to be here and to tell you the story, the story didn't start when I received Operation Christmas Shower shoebox. The story starts with one word. Yes. Yes. How many times do you say yes? I don't know. Maybe this morning, God is waiting a yes from you. Because the first time someone in my life said yes was my mom and dad. The day they received Jesus Christ as a Savior, they hear about him. They say, yes, Lord. We want you. We love you. We want to follow you. But saying yes to the Lord... You have to sacrifice something. My mom and dad didn't know the day they would say, yes, Lord, something will happen. They were rejected by their family. They leave their country, Guinea-Bissau, that is in the south of South Af uh, in Africa. They have to leave a country where their family, everything they love is there. They have to leave because they reject them. Because of one thing, they say, yes, Lord. They came to Senegal, a new country, and they have to continue to work with God. They continue to, to put God in their heart and their life. And my mom decided to do something. My mom decided to put a verse as a print for our family. She so say, no matter what is going on in your life, when you grow up, when you go with your family, your travel, remember you carry a name, the name of your family. And everywhere you go, this is what my, me and your dad, we pick as a verse, as a word from God to tell you what to do. And this is in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15b. My mom says, but as me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I don't want you to think, okay, I'm not at home anymore. I can do whatever I want. You are still in the family. And for as me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And with that verse, my parents received the call. My dad heard the call of the Lord. And he said yes again the second time. And this second yes was to go for ministry, to be a pastor. My name is Edouard Ndeki, and I'm from Senegal, West Africa. And my country is 17 million of people, and 95% don't know Christ. Now you know why I said earlier, it's an honor and a privilege to come to the house of the Lord. When God looked my country and he saw the 17 million of people and 95 that don't know Christ, he picked my dad to be a pastor. My dad said yes. My mom said yes. They want to follow. They want to serve the Lord. But they didn't know what's going to happen when they say yes to that. The first church that asked my dad to be a pastor can't pay my dad. They don't have any finance to pay him as salary. They can't give him a house. They can't also give him a transportation. That means the only thing they have is a pulpit to preach. 
You say, yes, you have it. You, you don't want to have to find someone else. But if you know my parents, they will say yes on everything that the God put them in it. And they say yes, and they were happy. But the problem is, I did not say yes. Why I have to be in the church where they don't pay us? My parents say yes to it. The church in our house where we were living is three miles. We walk. Walk three miles to go to church. Walk three miles to go home. Six miles. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday. Not just on Saturday for uh, band practice. No. Every single day. Six miles. And in Africa, when the pastor has a family, he's not the only one that show up at church. His whole family will sit in the front row, and members will ha- want to see you in your family. That push us to walk six miles every single day to go to church. I didn't say yes, Lord. He did. <laughs> Why I have to suffer to walk six miles to go to church? I didn't say yes. That was my thought, my words, every single day. And that hard situation, one day one of my dad friends came to him and said, Pastor Ndiki, I have a house for you and your family. What amazing to have someone that have a house for you and your family. And we were so excited to go see the, the house. We are walking to go to church. Our life is hard. A house? Let's go visit it. There was four walls, not a roof, not a door, and not a window. That was the house. My dad say yes. <laughs> Thank you. With a big smile, I have it. But before God call you for something, he will prepare you. And what God did, God prepared my dad. Before he called him as a pastor, he put the skill to be carpenter in his life. Now he, he gives him four walls and says, now it's time for you to fix it with the skills that you have. And do you know who did it? Not my dad. <laughs> Us. <laughs> I did not say yes to that. Why I have to wake up early every morning to go out to find some wood, some plastic, some uh, uh, metal to fix the roof? I did not say yes. He did. Why I have to suffer on that? We did it every single day, and finally we have our home with the door, window, and a roof. But we have another problem also. The house didn't have any electricity and any running water. We use candle, we buy candle to go to see in the house. And candle is expensive in my country. And also, we have to walk two and a half miles to buy water. And after we buy it, we put it on top of our head with the big buckets. And we walk two and a half miles, go home, and arrive at home. We have a cup that my mom will take, five cups of water for each person in the house to take a shower. I did not say yes to it. They did. Why do I have to suffer? in that condition, just because they say yes and they put me in. In that hard situation, my mom has to take a decision. As me and my family, we will serve the Lord. That lady have to take a decision, and the decision was to stop to go to church every single day. She has to work to feed us. Dad didn't have any salary. If we continue like this, we are not going to survive. 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. every single day, my mom worked as a maid, cleaning houses, on her knee all day, cleaning. When my mom go to work, we are sleeping. When my mom come back from work, we are sleeping. The only time for us to talk to her was on Sunday in church, and sometimes before church end, mom have to give us a look and say, I'm going to work. And my mom worked for only one reason, not for us to buy uh, water, electricity, all that. 
for us to be able to eat one meal a day every single day. And that was a dinner. If you don't know how hard it is to go to bed hungry, try it tonight. And that was hard. And with all that frustration, I came to my dad. I said, Dad, I have a question. I can't support this anymore. I did not say yes to it. I did not say yes when you accept to serve the Lord. You say yes with my mom. You and my mom said, as me and my family, we will serve the Lord, not me. Dad, why? Why? People outside that don't know Christ have everything they want and need. And we are serving the more powerful God. And we are living in this harsh situation. That was my question. And my dad looked at me and like always, if you know my dad, you will see always a smile coming. If you see that smile, you will know that he will hit you really hard with his answers. <laughs> and what he said was simple. Edward, if you don't have water or electricity, eating one meal a day, even if you don't have anything, you have the most precious thing in your heart, you have God. When my dad said that, I look at him and I said, I want to be like you. I want to know the God you serve. Yes, I want to know that God. But what I didn't realize when I was saying that, God was hearing me. He was listening. Oh, now you want to know me? Now you want to see me? Now you want to be like your dad who said yes to me years ago? Let me put you to a camp. God gave me opportunity to go to a camp. I was 12 years old. In that camp, I accepted Christ as my Savior. I say, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want to change everything. I want to be a Christian. And I remember the pastor saying this. Everything is new. The old you is gone. Everything is new and beautiful. Oh, I was ready to go home. I was ready to go home to tell my mom and dad, things will change. I'm a Christian. The old suffering is gone. Everything will be new. I was so excited, and I went home. Nothing changed. We were eating one meal a day, walking six miles to go to church, walking three and a, two and a half to buy water, and I slept on the floor for 15 years of my life. Life didn't change. But one thing changed, a heart of worship. I was thankful. And when I start being thankful, giving the gratitude, God saw it and heard it and said, I'm not done with you. And two years later, I went to this Good News Club. It's a program on Wednesday afternoon for kids in the church to know the gospel and to be able to teach that gospel to other kids the same age. And I went to the program. For the first time of my life, I was 14, I saw the Bible in image. For the first time of my life, I'm seeing what my dad was teaching us in the Bible in image. The teacher came in front of us and saw us the creation, God, Jesus on the cross, and that was so beautiful. The colors were awesome for the first time. And this amazing guy, after my teacher gave us the lesson, he came to the front and he yelled as hard as possible, I have a gift. Oh, yes, we were silenced like that. And, uh, and we said, yes, we know you have a gift, Jesus Christ. And he said, no. No, 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 no. I have an actual gift for everybody. And he turned around. And he placed the gift in our hands. Every child has a gift. This is mine. This is my gift. God, hear my cry. God, hear my voice. 
And today I'm having my gift. I was with my brother Noah. We hold our gift. And we start to counting. We have to count. To open our gift, to celebrate, to know what is inside. When the count start, I went to the man and I said, we are not going to open our gift. He didn't say why, he just said, okay. I went back to my seat and I told my brother, we are not going to open our gift. And guess what? He was mad. <laughs> he was mad at me because we are not going to open our gift. He didn't understand. But I didn't want to open my gift there because of one thing. This is my first gift. This is the only time someone has given us something for free. We can't open it in front of all these kids and adults without the person more special and special in our family that sacrificed everything for our family to stand. My mom. We have to open the gift in front of my mom. But we know one thing. Mom is going to come late. We are not going to see her the same day. No, God was planning something really amazing, a miracle. Mom came early. And when we hear the knock, we yell at heart, Mom, we have a gift. And we ran and sat on the floor because we didn't have any comfortable chair and sofa. And we have to open our gift. And inside my gift, the first thing I saw was a bottle of soap. When was the last time that you thanked God for your soap? When was the last time you saw your soap and you say, God, thank you for this little thing? You know why I'm so thankful for the soap I have? Because my parents, every night, you know what they do? Every night they have to think about the dollar that will feed six of us or the dollar that will buy one bar of soap. And that day, God gave me two bar in my shoebox. Think about having a bar of soap and not be able to use the whole bar at the same time. You have to cut it to pieces to be able to use it. Now, today, I want you, when you go home, I want you to look at your soap and say, God, thank you. And inside my shoebox, I received something also really special, my toothbrush. I have to share this with my brother for years. Waking up every day early because I don't want to brush my teeth second. <laughs> my toothbrush. My challenge for you today, when you go home, before you open your doors, if you have a family, I want you to stand in the front of your door, look at your house, and say, God, thank you. God, thank you for everything, every little thing you give my family. And open your door and look everything you have and say, God, thank you for every single thing. Because my family struggled just with a toothbrush. And God gave it to me in my shoebox. And inside my shoebox, I received something really special. I don't know how you call it. I think you call it yo-yo, right? Okay, let me tell you, this is not a yo-yo. This is called David Slingshot. This is what David used to fight Goliath. David hold it like this and wait for Goliath. It was, was, I was 14, for the first time of my life, I'm seeing something like this. As a Christian, I think it's an illustration to teach us David's story. And the, the, the goal was to, to, to fight our friends with. <laughs> but this yo-yo is really special for me because this same yo-yo is the one I received when I was 14 in my shoebox. 
the exact same green yo-yo. But this yo-yo was in my shoebox, and my family that day, we received a shoebox, was the only family in Christian family in that neighborhood, the only Christian family. And my box was the only box in the whole neighborhood to have a yo-yo. That pushed all the kids that don't know Christ to come to the house of a Christian house to borrow the yo-yo, to take it to their house, to show it to their parents that don't know Christ, and their parents will come with the shoebox to a Christian family to ask why their kids receive this. And it's an opportunity for my parents to share about Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, when I saw that, I told God, I want to be like a yo-yo. I want to be able to give your joy, your message to the simple way as a shoebox. And God did it. Years passed. I didn't think about it. In 2014, I came to the United States. I went to a Wednesday night, again, Wednesday, and I saw the shoebox. And I was just like, I received something like this. And everything started. I was not quiet anymore. I want to share the same love. I told God, I want to be like a yo-yo, to share your love in the simple way. I came to United States because I was preparing for the Olympics 2016. Saying yes to the Lord in my young age pushed me to be rejected by my national team in Senegal for track and field about my faith. They left me in the airport for the Olympic 2012. I was the fastest runner in my country and they left me in the airport because of the yes I said in the Lord. What do you have to sacrifice? The day you say yes, Lord, what do you sacrifice? My parents was rejected by their family. I was rejected by my team because of my faith. But it didn't stop me. When I came to the United States, I keep giving it until I realized one thing. It's not about the shoebox. Is about the yes you said. How many times God is calling you for something for this church? And you're still saying, I'm not ready for it. God is calling you for something in this neighborhood. God is calling you as a teacher to do something in your class, in your school. God is calling you as a doctor to do something in your hospital. God is calling you as uh, ambassador in the field that he gave you. My field is to talk about the story of God in my life of, through the shoebox and also as my athletic ability he put in my life to share the gospel to the runners, to share the gospel to the athlete. But the day I will face my Lord, the day I will be with him, he's not going to ask me, Edward, how many boxes do you pack? He's not going to ask me, how many medals do you want? He's not going to ask me all of that. He will ask me, Edward, I send you to the church in Abravo. Did you talk about me? Yes. I send you to the school. Did you talk about me? And today I want you to say, yes, Lord. For the call he's giving you since a month, a day, a year, say yes, Lord. Amen. Now, when you say yes, Lord, and you pack a shoebox, it's going to impact the kid. Because your yes is powerful and real. When you pack a shoebox, you put that love and that spirit and that prayer. When the box go to a kid's hand, when they open the box and they saw the gift that you packed there, their life is changed forever because of your yes. And today I'm here because the person that packed my shoebox say yes, Lord. Are you ready to say yes, Lord? 
Are you ready to give the Lord everything? Are you ready to say, Lord, I'm ready to clean my church? Now I want you, when you go home, when you go to your work tomorrow, and people will ask you, why? Why you spend too much time in your church? Why you go to Wednesday night? Why you go to Sunday? Why you pack a shoebox? We have hungry people everywhere. Why you are traveling and uh, you support missionaries around the world? Why you are doing this? Why you are doing that? Why? 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 I want you to stand in the firm assurance, to stand and to say in the loud voice, I pack a shoebox. I say yes to the Lord for the service in my church. I say yes, Lord, for the things that he called me because of one thing. Because I want him to say, faithful servant, the last day when he met me. I want kids around the world to be able to hear about Jesus Christ. I want people in my county, in my area, in my community to hear about Jesus Christ. Is why I go to church. Is why I'm doing mission work. Is why I work. Yes, I will continue to do that. Now, if we start doing it, we are fulfilling the commandment. Go. Preach the gospel to whole nations. Senegal is a French-speaking country. English is my most recent language. But the word of God was in Senegal too. And today, I'm the voice of 200 million of kids that hear the gospel through Operation Christmas Shah Shoebox. 200 million. Now I will end with this story. In January, I went to visit my family. And my dad told me, Edward, let's go and visit this family that just joined the church. I said, okay, let's go. I went to the house, conversation. Something in my heart was telling me, look up. Look up. I look up. In the top of the shelf, there is a shoebox. I yell hard, shoebox, and this, this little girl ran to me and said, it's my shoebox. Her name is Deborah. She's four. And Deborah said, this is my shoebox. And I said, Deborah, tell, tell me about your shoebox. She said, I received my shoebox when I was school. They give it to me at school. Deborah's brother didn't go to school. He's eight. He's at home, sick. Deborah received a shoebox, went home, opened the shoebox, and saw a door inside. She was so excited with the door, ran away to show everybody about her gift. The brother walked to the shoebox, grabbed a soccer ball. The parents panicked. They didn't know where the shoebox came from, who gave it to Deborah. They grabbed the soccer ball and the door. They put it back to the shoebox. They closed the shoebox, take the kids, went out to find a first Christian family that can tell them why their kids received this at school. They knock on the door where they think that is a Christian family. They knock on the door. My dad is opening the door. My dad tell them, oh, hello. We are here because our daughter received this at school. My dad said, oh, that is Operation Christmas Shah Shoebox. My son received one when he was 14. Come in, and I will explain to you about this. Now, today, we are worshiping the Lord here. Five hours ago. In the country where 95% of people don't know Christ, Deborah's family is worshiping the Lord. Because of a simple shoebox that was destined for just Deborah, who was four. 
because of Deborah Shoebox. Four person is in Christ. Yeah. Not just Deborah. But four person accept Christ and worshiping Christ like you. Raising their hand and saying, Hallelujah, because of a shoebox. Now, if you tell me that we are packing a shoebox, I will say, No, I'm not packing shoeboxes. I'm doing more. I'm sharing God's love and word through a shoebox. It's just a tool that God put in your hand to show to the rest of the world who he is. And today, this year, a kid is waiting patiently somewhere for your box, not mine, for your box to be packed and to be in their hand and for their life to be changed forever for Christ. But first, say yes, Lord, and God bless you.